If your casting is really screwed up, here's some things that you can do to fix it. All right, guys, I have a major problem, and that is I totally screwed up my right hand single spay and snake roll with long lines, which used to be my most comfortable cast with the long lines. Yes. Now I'll tell you the most perfect way to screw up your long line casting, and that is to fish with super short shooting heads and pick up a lot of bad habits. And now I'm having to rebuild it. I spent all summer practicing with my left hand. And my left hand is better, more consistent, kind of second nature type of thing. I'm a lot, I'm, I'm happy with that because I it took a lot of work because my left hand has never been that great with longer lines. It still isn't great but it's better than my right hand, which used to be, it had a lot of confidence in it. I could wade deep, cast decently far. Because you can get away with stuff with the short lines. And, they're a great learning tool if you use correct form. But what I like to do with short lines is like, so if I'm gonna do a waterborne cast, peel it and then lay my rod tip down and then just smash it with both hands and get a really tight loop that goes far. But the problem is, while that works really good and it's really fun with really short lines, when you do it with a longer line, you lay your bottom leg of your D-loop in the water. And so while I can do it with a short line, I can really rear back and let it rip by opening up my my uh, rod angle, which means taking it back to a really flat position back here. But doing that, that works great with short lines for me, just kind of a weird way to do it. But with long lines, if you try that nonsense, it's gonna lay the D-loop in the water and you're gonna have a big slurpy slurp cast. I call it the slurp cast. And it just, I just made that up. It's not really the slurp cast. So, I can tell you the best way to fix that though. And that is, how did I fix it? Okay, here's some things, here's some tricks. You can, what I do sometimes is just watch my rod tip. Make sure that it's going to up. Make sure that it's going up and not laying down. So after my sweep, instead of rearing back, I poke a hole in the sky. Left, sweep, drift, cast. Poking the hole in the sky makes your rod tip go up and it gets your D loop off the water, your V loop, whatever. You know, with a long line, the good thing about poking the hole in the sky is as you make more casts and get the feel of the anchor and cast that a light anchor with a D-loop that's um, not stuck in the water, what'll happen is you'll gradually be able to, instead of poking it high in the sky, poke it just a little lower in a little, lower until you don't need that so much but if you need it for like casting in deeper water or uh see that whoops that totally gets that d loop off the water gets that bottom leg of the d loop from sucking watch your rod tip 
Make sure it's going up. But you can watch it go up and you can watch the, the D loop form. So watch your rod tip and then watch your line. Okay, so I'm watching my line, make sure it's going up. I can look backward and even though this is a, like a, almost a 70 foot line, so I gotta really crane my look, neck and look back there. And even if you have the anchor out in front of you, you can still see that one wasn't as good. I'm gonna. Okay, I lifted my hands, poked a hole in the sky, swept up, and I made sure I didn't lay my rod tip down. So lift, sweep, and then when it's here, go up, but don't go back with the long line until you get really, 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 really good. Watch your rod tip, poke a hole in the sky, watch your line, and then when you get the D loop sorted out and you get the, your timing and stuff, Make sure that your D-loop is tight and you never know how tight your D-loop or V-loop is until you just give her a little extra onion right at the end, right there. See, I shot it, I overshot it. Left, push. Okay, push at the, when you get right, you're looking at the target. Rod tip is even with my shoulder. Push or, you know, rotate, you know, do something with your body. Do something with your bottom hand um. to get that a little more zing in your rod tip. You don't want to really bend the rod until you're facing the target. With any spay cast, you don't want to really give it a lot of bend in the rod until you're right there. You don't want to hit the sweep really hard. You gradually give her smooth acceleration of power until you get right here. I like to speed it up right through here. Give her a little push with the bottom hand. Make sure you're getting a light anchor. And that's another thing you can do is watch your anchor and just watch it. Overshot it. There, that's about, I don't know if you can see it or not. Get that light anchor. You never know how light you can get it until you like try casting way before it lands on these longer lines or with a touch and go cast with a snake roll or a single spay. Sometimes I'll cast it when it's three feet off the water and the anchor will just be perfect. I mean, I cast it when I think it's three feet off the water, but my reactions are probably slow. So lift, sweep, cast. Okay, it skipped out of the water. I threw it too early. I try to throw it right before it touches down. There, that was about perfect, and I felt like I threw it right before it touched down. The other thing you can do is make sure you're rotating your body, which might be the key for you to get it in any cast, especially the single spay. Single spay probably should make a whole video on this, but single spay, you can lift and rotate your body and cast. That's a, the biggest thing that helped me do a single spay was when I learned to quit trying to use my arms. I, I wouldn't, I'd point my toes downstream and then try to use my arms and cast. 
and you can do it like that once in a while but when i learned to just lift and then make my whole body go like that and then cast that was a secret to getting consistent anchor place placement and you can also try it with your snake roll if you want and uh you know but don't get crazy just just play with it on your snake roll lift it as high as you possibly can get it all out of the water as much as you can it it went back in i'll see if i can do it again And that, that'll get it as much out as you can, but especially with these longer lines. Even like left-handed, I'll try one left-handed. I like if it, and, and that has helped me to be able to, um, with this line, if it gets a little dirtier, if the leader sunk or if it all sinks, what that's helped me to do is instead of having to roll cast every time I want to make a cast, which see now I'm gonna have to. But if I cast out, okay, and it's like there, and now I want to roll cast, I can lift it, get it all out, throw it forward, and I, it keeps me from having to roll cast all the time. So I can get more reps in for practice. By getting that that anchor that that fly line all the way off the water as much as possible so just you know just a little bit of it is in there when I start the, the snake roll and then on the forward cast the other thing I will say for the forward cast and the sweep and and all of those kind of power stroke Try to slow the cast down enough that you feel the weight. So when I'm sweeping, I want to slow down, I want to lift slow and sweep slow. And when there's that tendency to rush it and push hard and get a really tight D loop, it seems like if you just slow down and feel the weight, and, and then when you do give it a little extra rod bend and push right through there, um, you can feel it and it feels heavy. You want it to feel heavy throughout the whole cast. And that goes for the, um, the forward cast too. So if you are wanting to just hammer the forward cast like we all have a tendency to do sometimes, and some rods can kind of take that, uh, but not all rods can. And, and for that forward cast, instead of just hammer it, hammering it, it helps to slow down and feel the heaviness throughout the cast. So instead of the rod going like, oh, I missed the eyelet. Instead of the rod just hammering down like that. You let just a little off and then you push smooth or pull or whatever you do. You make it real smooth real heavy and then when you get that heaviness in there then you try to accelerate as smooth as you can to that stop like see i slowed it down just a little bit i don't know if you can tell what i'm talking about slow your forward cast down feel the weight feel the load i guess and then You add the power. Hope this helps. And apologize, sorry about the hair.